What's up, Kim Peeps? What in the heck are we gonna do in this vid? Always a great question. We are going to use a set of initial concentrations or partial pressures, the equilibrium constant, and stoichiometric relationships to quantitatively determine the concentrations or partial pressures at equilibrium. So, two things. One, we are going to predict the concentrations at equilibrium when given the initial concentrations and our equilibrium constant K. Two, we are going to create and use ice, 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 baby, tables for determining concentration values that are consistent with the stoichiometry for a given reaction. All right, so many equilibrium calculations are solved using what we call the ice table method as a way to clearly track what happens as a reaction establishes equilibrium. Ice, ice tables. I stands for the initial concentrations or pressures for each species in the reaction mixture. C represents the change in concentrations or pressures for each species as the system moves towards equilibrium. And E represents the equilibrium concentrations or pressures of each species once the system is in the state of equilibrium. Ice, ice tables. Few things to keep in mind when you create ice tables. One, express all quantities in terms of concentration, moles per liter. Two, keep in mind that the change in each quantity must be in agreement with the reaction stoichiometry. We often represent that by the variable x. And you need to think about what is formed and what is consumed when determining whether the sign of those changes will be positive or negative. And then three, keep in mind that some students find it helpful to call these rice tables to remember to include the balanced reaction. I prefer ice tables just because I like the song. Ice, ice tables. All right, so let's take a look at an example to better understand how ice tables are gonna be used in class. Consider the following reaction. Boom. A reaction mixture at 780 degrees Celsius initially contains 0.500 molar carbon monoxide and 1.00 molar hydrogen. At equilibrium, the carbon monoxide concentration is found to be 0.15 molar. What is the value of the equilibrium constant? Write your equation, set up your ice table. Ice, ice tables. Step one, set up known initial concentrations and equilibrium concentrations. We're told the initial concentrations of carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and we can assume that, because those are the only concentrations we're given, that the concentrations of the other species, in this case the methanol, is zero. And we're told the equilibrium concentration of CO is 0.15. So important to note that we've had a decrease from our initial to equilibrium concentration for our carbon monoxide, which indicates the reaction is shifting to the right to establish equilibrium. Step two, since we know initial and equilibrium concentrations, let's calculate the change in concentration that occurs. We must have had a decrease of 0.35 molar concentration to get from 0.5 to 0.15. Step three, we're gonna use the stoichiometric relationships in the balanced chemical equation to determine the change in concentration for all the other reactants and products. So if I know that my carbon monoxide has decreased by a concentration of 0.35 molar, I know that my hydrogen has decreased by a concentration of 0.70 molar, and the concentration of my methanol has increased by a concentration of 0.35 molar. Again, carefully examine the stoichiometry to understand why those changes are written as they are. Step four, sum each column to determine the equilibrium concentrations. Easy, one minus 0.7, 0.3. Zero plus 0 0.35, 0 0.35. Step five, solve for the equilibrium constant using the equilibrium concentrations that we just determined in the previous step. Don't forget your equilibrium constant expression is products over reactants. Always write this out, even though you're not asked for it, always write it out. Plug in our equilibrium concentration values, equilibrium concentration values, then just bust out your calculator and solve. 0.35, divide by parentheses, parentheses, 0.15, close parentheses, new parentheses, 0 0.30, close parentheses, squared, close parentheses, enter. And that's how we get 26. Boom. Okay, so that was sort of the easy level ice table. Keep in mind that you will also sometimes be given initial concentrations 
and the equilibrium constant, which means then you'll first have to determine the reaction quotient Q to decide which direction the reaction is going to shift before continuing any calculations using your ice table. Second example. A reaction mixture at 2000 degrees Celsius initially contains a concentration of nitrogen gas of 0.200 molar and oxygen gas of 0.200 molar. Find the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and product at this temperature. Reaction. Ice, ice tables. Step one, set up known initial concentrations and equilibrium concentrations. Note, this time we're only provided with initial concentrations of our nitrogen and oxygen gases it's understood that we don't have any of our NO to begin with. Now, an important difference in this example, we aren't given any equilibrium concentrations, so we can't right away determine which direction this is going to shift. Step two, we're gonna use our initial concentrations to calculate Q and predict the direction of the shift. So Q is the concentration of products over reactants. Plug in your initial concentration values and determine the value of Q to be zero. Now, as you compare K and Q, recognize that K is larger than Q and therefore the reaction is going to shift to the right. Boom, an important step when you are not given equilibrium concentrations. Brings us to step three. Represent the change in concentrations of one of the reactants or products using the variable X, and then define the changes in the other reactants and products using the stoichiometric relationship found in the balanced equation. So this time, because we're not given an equilibrium concentration, we're just gonna use the variable X. Notice that my change in X for nitrogen and oxygen are each gonna be minus X. We know this reaction is gonna be shifting to the right, and therefore these concentrations will be decreasing. The concentration of NO is gonna be increasing, so I use a positive value, but it's also positive 2X. The change here is gonna be twice as much as the change of N2 or O2 as indicated by the stoichiometry in the balanced equation. Step four, sum each column to determine equilibrium concentrations. In this case, we're gonna sum them and define them still using x. So our equilibrium concentrations of N2 and O2, 0 0.200 minus x, equilibrium concentration of NO, 2x. Step five, substitute the equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression and solve for x. Again, equilibrium constant, concentration of products over concentration of reactants. Boom, always write this out in terms of the species of your products and reactants in your equation, always. Even when you're under pressure and you have to do it for time on a test, always. Then just plug in your equilibrium concentrations that you've solved for in your ice table. Now here, we're given the value of the equilibrium constant is 0.1. So our expression is equal to 0.10. Now it just becomes a fun algebra time. Recognize that if I multiply these two quantities together, I get 0 0.200 minus x squared. This results in a perfect square, sort of like me. In other words, if I square each side, square root of 0.1, that's gonna result on the other side of the equation of 2x over 0 0.200 minus x. And perfect squares are an important thing to look for. Let's keep busting out the algebra. I'm gonna multiply each side by 0.2 zero zero minus x. Boom. I'm then gonna distribute the square root of 0.1 throughout this quantity in parentheses. We end up with 0 0.063 minus the square root of 0 0.10 x equals 2x. I'm gonna combine like terms by adding the square root of 0 0.10 x to each side. That gets me 0 0.063 equals square root of 0 0.10 x plus 2x. Combined further, that gets me 0 0.063 equals 2.3x. Divide each side by 2.3, x is equal to 0 0.027. Two plus second, square root 0.1, answer. 0 0.063 divided by second, answer, answer. Boom. Step six, substitute x into the equilibrium concentrations that we determined in step four to determine the actual equilibrium concentrations. Since we know now what X is, we can plug it into these equilibrium concentrations and determine what they actually are. So for nitrogen, it's gonna be the initial concentration minus X, which we now know is 0 0.027. A quick jump to the calculator, 
tells you that at equilibrium, the concentration of N2 is 0 0.173 molar. That is also true for our concentration of oxygen at equilibrium. Boom, 0 0.173 molar. For NO gas, recognize that we defined it as 2X, and that X is that 0 0.027. So at equilibrium, the concentration of NO is 0 0.054. Now, we've answered this question, we've determined the equilibrium concentrations. But a great final step, step seven, check your answer. Sub your equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression and see how it compares to the original equilibrium constant value. Again, recognize how we define the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Plug in your equilibrium concentration values, which we just solved for, and determine the value of the equilibrium constant. Compare, ding, ding. Now, although they're not identical, considering the rounding we did with significant figures, these two match up. And also, just think about what a K value less than one means. Our product concentration is gonna be less than our reactant concentrations. And that's what we got. Math does it for me every time. All right, last thing to think about here with ice tables, and it's the trickiest. Now, in the last example, we had to use the variable X, and sometimes that's necessary. If it is, check and see if you have a perfect square like we did in the last example. And that sort of eased the process a little bit. But you can also look for very small K values where K is less than 10 to the minus five, or your initial molarity is a thousand times the value of your equilibrium constant. Therefore, the change in concentration from your initial to equilibrium may be negligible, and therefore you won't need to use the quadratic equation. But you should be comfortable doing what we're gonna do here with these approximations for the test. Now, I like to think of this X is small approximation as simply subtracting 0 0.003 from 1.0. If you use significant figures, subtracting such a small value from one doesn't really change the value of one. Imagine if you're standing on a scale holding a penny, right? Giving away that penny isn't really gonna change the, va the reading on the scale, unless you have a super precise scale. But regardless, it's always important to check this approximation to ensure that X is less than 5% of the initial concentration. Otherwise, it's too large to be considered negligible. Now, if you're like, what? Example, consider the reaction for the decomposition of hydrogen sulfide. Boom, a 0.500 liter reaction vessel initially contains 0.0125 mole of H2S at 800 degrees Celsius. Find the equilibrium concentrations of H2 and S2. Reaction, ice table. Ice, ice tables. Step one, set up known initial concentrations and equilibrium concentrations. As you take a look at what I've done here, 0 0.0250, what? That doesn't show up here. Remember that it's important to use concentrations in your ice table. So if you're given moles and liters, be sure to convert to concentrations. Once again, we aren't given any equilibrium concentrations. What we wanna do next is determine the value of Q, compare it to K, to determine which direction our reaction is going to shift. So think about Q, concentration of products over concentrations of reactants. Define it in terms of this reaction. Plug in our initial concentrations and solve for the value of Q, in this case, zero. As I compare K to Q, recognize that even though K is very small, it's still larger than zero. So in this case, the reaction is also going to proceed to the right. K is greater than Q. So let's represent the change in concentration of one of the reactants or products using the variable X and define the other changes using the stoichiometric relationship we find in the balanced chemical equation. Notice that for H2S, it's minus 2X because our reaction is shifting to the right. We're gonna be using some of this up. H2 and S2 are each defined positively and also based on the stoichiometry that we see in the balanced chemical equation. Step four, determine your equilibrium concentrations, summing each column together. Boom. Step five, sub those equilibrium concentrations into your equilibrium constant and solve for X. Equilibrium constant expression. Define it specifically for this equation. Always do this step. Always plug in your equilibrium concentrations that you just solved for. Recognize that we are given the value for the equilibrium constant. So this expression is equal to 1.67 times 10 to the minus seven. Notice that I've simplified the numerator here by multiplying 2x squared by x to get 4x cubed. 
Notice how this is not a perfect square. It's not like that previous example where I could just square root each side and move along. I would have to use the quadratic equation to solve a problem like this. Or what we can do is make the x is small approximation. Or to say is that the change is gonna be so small that we can sort of ignore it when solving this equation to help make the math a little easier and we shouldn't actually be too far off from the real or true equilibrium concentrations. So by making the x's small approximation, I end up with 4x cubed over 6.25 times 10 to the minus four. All I did was eliminate that minus two x and square my 0 0.0250. Then it's just fun algebra times. I'm gonna multiply each side by 6.25 times 10 to the minus four. I'm gonna multiply those two values together. That's where I get the 1.04 times 10 to the minus 10 equals 4x cubed. Divide each side by four. Take the cube root of each side to get x equals 2.97 times 10 to the minus four. Divide by four, answer. Watch how I do this. Math, four to get cube root, second, answer, answer. And that's where we get the 2.97 times 10 to the minus four for our value of x. Step six. An important one anytime you do the x is small approximation. You've got to make sure that the value of x is less than 5% from the value that it was added or subtracted from. So we're going to take our 2.97 times 10 to the minus 4, compare it to our 0 0.0250, the initial concentration that we subtracted it from, multiplied by 100 and get a value of 1.19%. As long as this is 5% or less, the x is small approximation works. You've got to show this. Important. It gets you out of the quadratic, so take the time to do it. Once we've verified, then we're just gonna plug x into our equilibrium concentrations to determine the actual e equilibrium concentrations. For H2S, recognize how we define the equilibrium concentration, plug in the value for x, which we just solved for, to get the equilibrium concentration of 0 0.0244 molar H2S. Apply that same idea to the equilibrium concentration for H2. Notice that we simply defined it as 2x, therefore equilibrium concentration of H2, 5.94 times 10 to the minus four. S2 is equal to x, and therefore concentration 2.97 times 10 to the minus four. All right, so we've solved for and completed this problem. Are we done? No, check your, check your work. You've got all the time in the world on the test. Not like they're timed. Plug it back into the equilibrium constant for this equation. Plug these values into your calculator and solve. Recognize that we determined the K value to be 1.76 times 10 to the minus seven. Compare that the equilibrium constant given to you in the problem. These are close enough considering the X is small approximation that we made in this problem. All right, and that's it for this vid. Have a fantastic day.